Good evening, everybody. And for those of you not from The Hunter, welcome. Thank you. My question is to the panel. 20 years after she was convicted over the death of her four babies, Kathleen Folbig today was pardoned and freed from prison after it was concluded there is reasonable doubt about her guilt. Considering the evidence provided in the Kathleen Folbig case, what precedent do you think this will set and what changes could be made to our laws to prevent this from happening again? Sharon, thank you for the question. Lord Mayor, I might go to you first on this. Absolutely. It is a tragedy. We've seen four beautiful babies lost. We've seen a woman's life, 20 years of her life, uh, her marriage, so many lives affected. And when you see that type of tragedy, you can only think, what can we do in the future to really make changes? And looking at um, the Attorney General, Michael Daly, uh, and what he has done today under a men's labour government has been the right move, I think, uh, for Kathleen and for justice. There's a couple of stages to go, but in the interim, it really is the science that got us to this point. Mm. And I think the question really is, what role does science play in the judicial system and how can we actually make sure those evidence and fact-based de decisions are actually included more in that judicial process? Yeah, it's an interesting point. Can I ask you, as mentioned earlier, uh, Kathleen Folbig from this region, do you think she would be welcomed back here? Oh, absolutely. So the, her lawyer, um, University of Newcastle graduate, uh, vocal, uh, a number of her supporters all come from Newcastle in this region that have campaigned tirelessly uh, for her innocence and uh, continued petition after petition to actually see the, the case re-examined. So uh, absolutely, I, I think you, you can't underestimate the tragedy of just losing four children. I mean, I'm a mother of three, let alone going through that and then spending 20 years in jail. Yeah, Annika, well, let me just bring you in on this because, I mean, this is such an extraordinary case. Uh, I think it's fair to say we haven't seen anything quite like it since probably Lindy Chamberlain. Um, as the Lord Mayor says, it's a breakthrough in science mm. that, that has really led to her being pardoned. To Sharon's question, um, what sort of precedent do you think this does set? Mm. Well, I think there's probably two elements to this now. There's actually what's happened here in this case, and you have to, I mean, 20 years is such a long time to be in prison, particularly if you have always protested your innocence. So I think let's take a moment to think about what she and all those, you know, all those family members who loved those children must be feeling tonight. And then for us as, as public policymakers, there's how do we move this forward? How do we get better? And I think it raises some really interesting questions about how do we amend our justice system so that this, the best of science, the best of developments coming out of University of Newcastle, for example, can be used so that it doesn't happen again. I think it's a really interesting early decision by a new Attorney General, and I'm sort of excited by what it, what it holds for us. Yeah, Ted O'Brien, I mean, is, is there a way to ensure this sort of thing doesn't happen again by making some of the changes that's being suggested here? Oh, David, I think if there are changes to be made, well, they should be. I feel as though it's probably premature to try to get ahead and guess what precedents mm. might be set. Um, I think like others, instinctively, when I heard the news, um, I felt it as a dad and thinking of those four little kids, mm. you know, who lost their life. Um, I think it's right to talk about the evolution of science and how that can improve evidence. Mm. Um, but I think it's also a reminder of how timeless key principles can be. And one of those key principles is the presumption of innocence until proven guilty beyond reasonable doubt. And do you think that happened here? Is that what you said? Well, it's not for me to judge. And I think it would be, I think it'd be inappropriate, especially given the, the KC um, mm. hasn't um, delivered the final report to the governor too. Nathan, let me just get your thoughts on this because you had something like 90 scientists say you've got to relook at this decision here. What does this tell us about the role of science in our legal system? Yeah, it's, it's really important. You know, it's, uh, research is ever evolving. There's new technology all the time and I think it's important that we use it for our full advantage. And I think in this case it's, um, it's led to 
you know, obviously a, a good decision. Um, it, I, I also wonder the type of precedent that it sets, how many other people are currently locked up that, that shouldn't be, um, or that, that, you know, science may uh, prove their innocence um, when they've been telling that for, for many years. So I, I, I hope that uh, we, we're able to, to find further people that are, that are incarcerated that might be able to, you know, have their cases heard through science.